Welcome to Earth Science. Today I'm going to do a quick demonstration of our erosion lab that we would normally do in class, but because of COVID, um, we can't do it. We don't have enough supplies for everybody to have their own. So we're going to do a demonstration and do a virtual lab for you guys today. What you're going to need is one bucket. This is just a Rubbermaid tub about the size of a shoebox. You can use an actual cardboard shoe box if that's all you've got. You'll just want to line it with foil and make sure you seal up the edges so the water that you're going to put in here eventually doesn't seep out and sink into the cardboard itself um, because that will make it weak. It'll lessen the, lower the integrity, um, structural integrity of the box, and it could collapse on you. And that's going to make a huge mess and we don't want that. So some type of container. You can use a pie plate, you can use um, a roasting pan, um, a pot, a large bowl of some kind, whatever you've got laying around the house is totally fine. You can substitute out all of these supplies we're gonna use today for household items. I have a 200 milliliter beaker here that I used. I got about three scoops of sand um, from my sand bucket and put it in here. You can collect sand or even dirt uh, from your yard. If you've got a flower garden or something, you're going to put it back. You're not going to do anything to it that's going to um, change the chemistry of it. So it will be perfectly fine to put this back where you got it um, and everything is going to be restored back to normal. You do want to make sure you have permission to get it from wherever you get it from. If it's on your property, get permission from your parent or guardian. Um, if it's off your property, you want to make sure you have permission to take it from wherever you're taking it from. I also have these large um, pebbles, rocks. Um, these are going to represent boulders in our experiment. I have a couple of these. I've got three of them here of different sizes. I have a straw. Um, you can get these from just run into a fast food restaurant, grab one off the, the shelf. Even a gas station should have some out there for you. Some type of container like this, um, you can use a shovel to get your dirt or sand, but you'll need some type of container, a glass, a cup, a bowl, whatever, to have some water in. You can even use a water bottle if you'd like. Please don't use a fresh one. Use a recycled one that you've already drunk out of. Safety goggles are important on this. Um, if you have glasses, you're probably okay. But you need something because when you blow on this, um, even sunglasses for this part, when you blow on the sand, um, the particles will go everywhere and you don't want to get them in your eye. So, the last thing you're going to need, I have this little piece of plastic. This is actually a cut up cutting board. Um, anything will work for this. You can use a ceramic plate. You can even use your hand if you don't have anything. You want something sturdy that you can kind of do a wave action with and move the water so it splashes up against the sand in part three. So set all of that to the side for now. Um, what you're gonna do for the first part of this lab is you're gonna set up your sand dune like this. You're gonna make a drawing of what it looks like now. So you've got some of these larger pebbles down here at the bottom and scattered throughout. You have your large boulders here. And then you have mostly this loose sand. So draw a picture of that. And then once you've got that done, it just can be a sketch. It doesn't have to be beautiful. Um, do it on a scratch paper, a napkin, whatever. You're not actually going to turn in your drawing. Um, you're going to turn in the questions at the end of this. And the questions are what's embedded in the Canvas lesson um, or linked in the Canvas lesson for you to make a copy of. Um, if you are not watching this on my Canvas class, you should have re access to a copy of the questions that go with it. They are in the lab procedures themselves. So the procedure is going to tell you to take your straw and you're going to blow on the sand. You're going to direct it at the sand. And you're going to watch what happens. So as you do this, you're going to watch what happens with the sand and see how um, it erodes away with the wind. You 
can see this little guy here is starting to move a little bit. Um, the sand underneath him is starting to fall away. It's eroding away, and that's um, making it harder for him to hold on there. Once you have a good amount of sand displaced, you can see down here at the bottom, the bottom of my bucket has started getting pretty um, covered with loose sand that I've displaced from my dune up here. Um, this larger boulder here is starting to move a little bit, so I'm going to pause here, and I'm going to take my deering pick image, I'm going to draw this out. Um, again, it doesn't have to be perfect, you can do just a, you know, a sketch of the dune, and then smaller circles for the pebbles, larger circles for the boulders, call it good. So you're just going to mark their locations and note that some of the sand is down here on the bottom now. Once you've done your gearing drawing, you're going to go ahead and try and displace a little bit more of the sand, and you want to mostly cover the bottom of your container here to do your after. So I'm getting more and more down there, and eventually you're going to see all of this sand down here that's been displaced. So now you're going to go ahead and make your after image show what this looks like in here. Draw your after picture, and then what you're going to do is you're going to rebuild your sand dune. Don't throw away your straw just yet, and you'll use it in part two. So, at this point, draw your after picture, take a minute, pause the video, answer the questions from part one of your lab activity, and then we will move on to part two when you're ready. Come back, push play, and we'll go to part two. For part two, I'm going to just scooch all my sand. I'm going to shake it back up to this end here. And you're going to tap it down and make a plateau out of it. Um, it's going to be a little bit easier to do this. I'm actually going to set my boulders in here. It's going to be a little bit easier to do this if you use wet sand. So take that water that you had and get your sand a little bit wet and that will help it hold its shape a little better. I'm actually going to switch out my dry sand for my wet. Um, but all you would do is just sprinkle some of your water on top, just enough to get it moist. You don't want to have a bunch of water hanging out down in the bottom of your bucket yet. Okay. So keep all of this up here at this end then, as best you can, and you'll see I've got a little bit of an angle here. This is a flat plateau, and I've got an angle going. I'm going to make this a little bit wider of a plateau, I'm going to flatten this out some, because I want my plateau to be nice and wide. Okay, I'm going to get rid of my plastic there for a second. So here's my plateau. I've got a little bit of a slope going there. Now I'm going to get my straw back, and I'm just going to very gently make a riverbed in here. I'm not pushing deep. This isn't going deep into this uh, sand. I'm just barely making an impression of a riverbed. 
I'm going to make it meander a little bit over here. Maybe meander it over here a little bit. We'll fill in there some. Okay. I'm going to scooch my extra sand out of the way for right now because we don't want that to get in the way of the bottom. So you can see I've got now this kind of snake pattern to it. Uh, let's see if I can get this up here. So right in here, I've got a little bit of a snake pattern. That indentation right there, it's only about an eighth of an inch deep to a quarter of an inch deep. That's my riverbed. I'm now done with my straw. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that away. Make it a little bit easier to clean up my mess. Now you're going to take your container that has your water and you're going to start slowly pouring the water in down here at the source of the river and it's going to flow down your riverbed here towards the mouth of your river. And you're going to watch what happens down here at the mouth of the river as the water flows. So before you pour the water, this is your before picture. Go ahead and sketch it. Make sure that you include your riverbed here. Once you're done sketching, go ahead and come back to the video. Pause while you sketch if you need to. Come back, push play, and we'll get started with our river. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and start pouring our river. I'm actually going to use the beaker because it has a lip on it instead of the, the bottle. But watch as I do this. I'm just going to pour it in very gently here at the, the source. And it's going to widen out the source there a little bit. But you can watch the water flow all the way down the riverbed. Now it's flowing out the mouth of the river. And look what's happened here. Do you see this? All of the sediment that it's picked up along the way here has spanned out right here along the mouth. So now I have this fan shape coming out from the mouth of the river. So go ahead and stop here. Once you get this fan shape going, stop there. Um, draw your deering picture. Pause the video. And once you get your deering picture drawn, you'll come back and we'll go ahead and finish pouring the rest of the water and get you an after picture. So sketch it out and come back. <clears throat> All right, welcome back. I'm going to go ahead and add in the rest of my beaker of water here. I'm going to go a little bit faster. You can see it spread up here. This is how lakes are going to form. It's going to erode away the, the source here and give you a lake. And look how big this delta is getting down here. It's all the way out here now. Remember, it was flush here. My river is no longer meandering. Now I've got this giant wide space here. And this huge delta down here at the bottom sticking out right here. So this will be your after picture. The riverbed has widened all the way across here, all the way up. You have this huge lake area here at the source, much larger than it was. And you've got a giant delta down here at the bottom. I'm going to have you guys pause here. Go ahead and sketch out your after. Answer the questions for part two. I'm going to get me some more water here. Um, so that I can fill it up and do part three with you while you guys are sketching. I will see you back. All right, hopefully you paused the video while you were sketching. Um, I'm going to go ahead and fill up my bucket. Mine has this lip on it here. I'm going to go about a third of the way up the bucket, or about halfway to that lip. I'm just going to dump some water in there. That's probably pretty good. 
Now I'm going to come back to my little plastic piece, and I'm going to move this sand all the way back up here to make my dune again. I'm going to do this gently so that I don't make waves when I do it. I want to rebuild this so I have my dune again. You can rebuild your dune before you add the water in. That might actually be a little bit easier. Um, but what we're going to do now is part three. So part three, all you're going to do is take your little piece of plastic and drag it towards the shore. And watch what happens here. Do you see my dune getting destroyed? The water's bringing it back down. getting smaller and smaller, lower and lower as this wave action happens. My waves are going over the top of it, pulling it down. My dune was way up here, and now it's way down here. Now, I've been kind of scraping the bottom, so my sand has been moving up with me as I scrape the bottom, but if you hold your, your plastic up a little bit higher and keep going, try and not hit the sand that's down there at the bottom, it'll erode further down, and you can see it come down. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to empty this water out into my other container. I'm going to dump my dry sand. This is going to be um, we'll call this the after. The during is going to be you're going to stop during that process when the dune starts to go lower and you'll draw the lower dune sand going underneath the water. So I'm going to dump my dry sand so that I have a container to put the water into. And I'm going to show you what's happened to my dune here. Alright, so I've got some of this water out. Look at what's happened here. My dune is super flat. And you can see as the water moves, it's all the way down the edge here, and all the way down inside. So here's what we've got. I still have a little bit of water in here, but you can kind of get the idea of what it's going to look like. I have sand covering the bottom of my bucket now. My dune is down here flattened. I could add more water and continue this process and it would eventually completely flatten out and cover the whole bottom evenly. So this is wave action. Um, go ahead and draw your before, during, and after on this. Answer the questions for part three. Um, some of the questions are going to have you think a little bit about um, ways that you could adjust this to check for other types of erosion or weathering. Um, some ideas on how you could change it up. But once you're done, you've answered your questions, go ahead and turn those in um, through whatever method your instructor is requiring. Uh, my students have to use the Google Drive tab on Canvas when they submit assignments, but whatever your instructor tells you to do. Um, clean up your mess. You'll want to empty the water out. You don't want to dump this water down the sink. Please do not dump the sand water down the sink. 
look how gross this is. You don't want that in your sink, okay? And this actually doesn't look nearly as yellow on the camera as it does in person. So you'll want to take this outside um, and dump it in the yard so that you don't clog up any pipes, okay? Um, all of this, since it's just sand and dirt, can be disposed of in the yard. Just take it outside and dump it. Super easy. Throw away your trash, uh, clean up any of your um, glassware or cookware that you might have used to grab your supplies in, get your assignment turned in, and you are done for the day. Good job.